Check, check. Defense will the calls 
and the third to the second half. Both will be receiving and get up in the first half. Welcome to Friday Night Football in Earl Bolton Stadium here on the campus of the Cornwall Levin School District for tonight's football game. It's the Cedar Crest Falcons versus the Wilson Bulldogs. With me in the booth tonight, your favorite Falcon basketball coach, Coach Tom Smith. What's up, Coach? How are we doing tonight? Great, Coach. Beautiful night for football. Yeah. Falcons coming off a huge win at Hemfield last week. Aiden Richards had a gigantic game from everybody's account. And the Wilson Bulldogs are coming off of two LL wins, beating McCaskey last week and Penn Man of the previous week. So should we have a good Lancaster 11 league football game tonight? Falcons won the toss and deferred. They'll be kicking. Bulldogs will be deep to receive. If you're looking on the camera, the Bulldogs are in the red pants and the white top. Falcons in the air, all gray uniform tonight. Looks like Ryan Glover will be kicking off tonight. Well, on paper, Coach, it looks like it should be a pretty good game. Um, both teams averaging about 280 yards a game. Um, Cedar Crest is at 283, and um, Wilson's at 279. And both teams letting up um, somewhere between uh, 230 yards, and, and uh, Cedar Crest is at 271. So. On paper, it looks like we should have a good battle tonight. Ryan Glover kicks the ball off, spinning a little bit. Touched, fielded about the 17-yard line. First Falcon defender had a shot at him. Didn't get a number on that Wilson jersey, maybe number 25. Takes it back to the 27-yard line. First and 10, Wilson Bulldogs. All right, looks like for the Bulldogs that number one, Cameron Jones, is the quarterback. Number, number 10, coach. Check that. Number 10, Brad Hoffman. Quarterback keeper for about seven yards. Although he is their quarterback, he's their second leading rusher on the season. Um, he has 56 attempts on the season. So uh, looks like they're going to try and run this Wildcat style offense um, and where they like to run the quarterback a lot. Second and three for Wilson. Off in the shotgun. Flags in the play. Looks like we had movement on the offensive line. Also some defenders jump. We'll see what the refs call here. Yep. 
false start. Wilson backs it up, five yards, second and eight. Caught a little break there. Hoffman still in shotgun formation. Keeper again. Brought down by Kaler, but not after a Wilson first down. Looks like they had a shot at him in the backfield there, Coach. Kind of elusive. Yeah, he looks like to be a tough runner. Um, you know, talking to the coaches, and they said that you know he's tough to bring down. Um, you know, rarely is he being tackled by one guy. And um, you know, the one thing I think one of the strengths of Cedar Crest defense has been this year has been their tackling. So uh, it looks like we're gonna have a little strength on strength here to see how we um, see what we can do here to get them off the field. Off and hands off. To number four, Jaden Jones. Jones rumbles forward for 15. Again, another tough run through the heart of the Falcon defense. Uh, you know, they're running this little read option, uh, two man option. Quarterback gets his key, it's either give key or, uh, or keep key. And it uh, looks like the two of them are, are, are big, strong runners. And um, I, I think we're gonna get a steady dose of that tonight. You can certainly assume the Bulldogs are gonna stick with this until they, the Falcons can show they can get a stop or two. Hand off to Genda Jones around the right edge and he has some space. Stiff arm and another 17 yard pickup. <laughs> Testing the perimeter there, um, like a little outside zone. Um, same, same concept as their inside zone. Um, you know, they got their outside zone read, either give or keep. And um, again, there was a give keep, and they, they had they able to get to the perimeter. Um, one stiff arm. Next thing you know, 17-yard gain. First and ten, ball on the 29. First pass of the night. Out to number nine, TJ Flight. First pass we've seen the night from Hoffman is right on the money for a gain of six. That was uh, TJ Flight's 10th catch on the season. He's their leading receiver. Again, they don't look, like the, don't look to put the ball in the air too much. Uh, only averaging 92 yards through the air uh, per game. Uh, they like to, um, you know, your old traditional Wilson football team where they like to, uh, you know, run the ball down your throat. Second and four. Again, movement on the lines. Offsides on the defense. That's going to give the Wilson offense a first down. Gonna be first and ten fall on the 18 yard line. Coach, for the most part, the Falcon defense been pretty stout in the red zone. Looking for a stop here. Yeah, they've done a nice job in, in the red zone all season. A uh, couple of goal line stops, if I can remember, uh, uh, versus E Town. Which led to that, um, you know, close loss. Hoffman's pass just a, just a little too long for number eight, Jason Beckford. And uh, I checked that that was number nine, T.J. Flight again. And, and and red zone stops. I think last week against Hemfield, I think they had two. One on the goal line, they recovered a fumble uh, in the first half. Um, so again, they have been stout. But, you know, bend but don't break, and they've done a great job of that this year. Second and 10. See if they can get a good, at least force a third down. Quarterback keeper. A lot of Falcons in the backfield. Looks like Coach Lambros made an adjustment. They were playing two high safeties. Um, and, and then typically when you're getting beat with the run, it's a numbers game. Um, so you'd like to bring that extra safety down. And it looks like they're uh, manning up on the outside. Again, not being too um, concerned about the pass. 
uh, man up on the outside and, and put some guys in the box to stop the run. They've done a nice job there on second down. All right, third and nine. This would be a big stop early in the game for the Falcons. At least make the Wilson Bulldogs make a decision for fourth down. Three wide receivers to the far side for the Bulldogs. Looks like we're manned up again. Hoffman and Jones. Oh, the ball's on the ground! The ball's on the ground, and the Falcons get the turnover! Nolan Groff comes from the backside, knocks the ball free of Hoffman. Falcons pick it up, and then just like we were talking about, Ben don't break, they get the turnover early in the first quarter. Great pass rush by Nolan Groff. Able to get around uh, the offensive tackle. He does a real nice job of bending and strip sack, turnover. Cedar Crest is in business. All right, first and 10 Falcons ball on the 25 yard line. Wow, Huber, big throw, great catch from Ethan Heise. Nice to see him back with the home turf this year. Heise's the one who caught the uh, go-ahead touchdown last week against Hemfield. Um, ran a great route, uh, stutter and go. Huber put, put the ball on him for a touchdown late in that game to uh, put the Falcons ahead. Second and six. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage from Huber. Got a couple wide receivers on the far side that uh, all stopped. So we got third and six. Boy, coach, on that strip sack and fumble, for a second there it looked like the ball could have been snatched up and run for back it's to the other way for six, but uh, glad the Falcons fell on it. It's one of those things, man. It, it's it's sitting there, and, and you try and scoop it. It's it's not as easy as it looks. And uh, the ball just kind of fumbled right away from them. They were able to get on it. Huber throws a rifle over the middle. There was two Falcons there, Groff and Kaler. Groff had his hands on it, but well defended from the Bulldogs. Brings up a fourth and six. Yeah, it looked like there might have been a missed assignment there. You typically don't have two receivers in the exact same area. Um, looks like maybe one of the receivers ran the wrong pattern. Um, nonetheless, we got fourth and five here, and um, Nolan Groff back in punt formation. Like Coach said, Nolan Groff, our punter for the Falcons, back deep to receive for the Bulldogs. Uh, number one, Cameron Jones. Cameron Jones was, Cameron Jones takes it back for a Bulldog touchdown. He was basically had for a seven or eight yard loss from where he originally took it, spun out of the tackle, and then reverse field, took it all the way down for six for the Bulldogs. Heck of a run from the Cameron Jones. Unfortunate turn of events to right yeah, that there. Was a heck of an individual effort right there, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, Nolan Groff got off a great punt under some some significant pressure. It looked like Falcons were gonna really flip the field and then Jones, heck of a run. Number 27, Ben Rada on for the extra point. That could kick is up good and off the scoreboard. So, with 6.41 left in the first, Bulldogs seven, Falcons zero. Like you said, Coach, uh, Nolan did a great job of, of getting the ball off. It looked like they had their pump block on, um, but it didn't, didn't get any hang time. The ball bounced, he was able to field it. And sometimes those are the best best uh, punts to return. And um, again, Cameron Jones made a great individual effort, broke one tackle, made a couple guys miss, um, showed some speed to get to the end zone. Well, let's talk about our sponsors who are bringing you the live stream tonight. 
Jonestown Bank and Trust, JBT, founded in 1873. JBT is a local company, independent community bank with 14 locations in the surrounding Lebanon, Lancaster, and Berks County area. That's right, you Wilson fans listening out there. JBT, helping local residents, families, and businesses bank on a smile. Heisey's Diner, the food is finer at Heisey's Diner, located on Route 72, north of Lebanon, PA. I tell you what, Cameron Jones looked like he had some Heisey's Diner fuel there. Normally, Falcons are fueled up at the Heisey's good cooking, but good gracious. Rod is kick short. Fumbled by the deep Falcon. Ball was loose. Number 81 for the Bulldogs. Comes up with the ball at the bottom of the pile. Wes Prent. Prentice with the recovery. It was a high kick coach, tough to field. Yeah, and again, if, if you don't field it, I saw the returner tried to pick it up instead of trying to jump on it. And again, it's, it's a harder thing to do than, than what it looks like. And then ball bounces around. It found the arms of uh, Wilson Bulldog. First and 10, ball in the 19. Lateral pass to Cameron Jones there. Again, we're seeing Cameron Jones' elusiveness as he was tackled for a half. Looked like he was going to be tackled for a loss. Got free and got uh, a couple yards. Good, good looking athlete. Looks like he has good low center of gravity. Um, you know, trying to tackle him low around the legs and he's able to, to break the tackle. <laughs> Hoffman on the keeper. Hurdles a defender. The ball must have come loose because Falcons all point the opposite way and then the official confirms it. So we got a turnover. I don't know if a Falcon just took it out of his arms there, Coach? Yeah, I tell you what, I didn't see the end of the, I didn't see the, end of the play. Oh, we got replay in the booth here, so we're going to take a look at it. I know you might not be able to see it home. Yeah, fumble on the play, and number three, Owen Chernich comes up with the loose ball. So look, Trayvon Zerby did a great job of staying with it and uh, making a play from behind, knocking the ball out of, out of uh, quarterback's hands. Again, two turnovers inside the red zone. Defense is doing a nice job keeping Cedar Crest uh, alive and keeping him in this game. Hubert in the shotgun formation. Heise goes in motion. Richards running hard. I think uh, if Cedar Crest wants to get a victory here, they need to feed him uh, like they did last week. I think he had over 100 yards rushing. I think he had 19 touches. Uh, or thereabout, he had, uh, I know he had 19 tackles on defense, um, and he's been all over the field all year for them, but uh, what, a, what a game he had. Pick six to start the scoring for him. Uh, Aiden Richards, I'm not sure what his future plans are, but he could be a heck of a player at uh, the collegiate level. Balls up, flag on the play. Looks like Taylor was held. Number 36, Eric Jackson on the coverage. See what the call is. Holding on the Bulldogs. That'll be a 10 yard penalty and first down. Um, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a first down. Um, passing the sticks, so it's gonna be a first down. 
Obviously nice to get out of the end zone there, Coach. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, Caleb, real nice release to the outside. Had a couple steps in the defense back. The only thing he had to do was hold him. Um, but yeah, real nice get out from your uh, own end zone. Get some breathing room here. Looks like we got an option here. Huber swings it out wide. To Richards. Picks up maybe a yard and a half. Based on the spot, looks like they got back to the line of scrimmage. Huber rolling to his right, finds Groff. Makes a nice catch and gets up field. Be first, first down. down. Yeah. Real nice quick roll, get the ball out of your hands. Um, put it on the money to, to one of his favorite receivers, Nolan Groff. I'll check that, I thought it was past the sticks. It's gonna be a yard or two short, so we're gonna third or two, third and short. Yeah, I thought it was a, I thought so too, the way the, the, the official at the top side of the field was marking, he was marking a yard past first down. Yeah. Maybe no one stepped out. That's all right. Hey, if we're living in third and short, you know that's that's advantage to Cedar Crest, especially when you got a workhorse running back like Aiden Richards behind you. Looks like they're blitzing here. Might have came across. Yeah, flag on the play. So false start on the Falcons. That's gonna. Take it from third and two to third and seven. Those are the uh, those are the penalties that kill you. Yeah, you're in a, you're in a third and short situation after you get you know one first down, looking to put a little bit of a drive together and uh, shoot yourself in the foot. Um, you know, third and two versus third and seven against this Wilson Bulldogs defense is, is a heck of a lot different here. So. Bulldogs pretty strong up front. Huber has time. Again, looking over the middle. Groff and Kaler both again in a similar area. Ball falls incomplete, brings up fourth and seven. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're running crossing routes because they're both coming from opposite sides of the field. Typically, crossing routes are a little bit more shallow than where they're at. So it makes me, I'm not sure if there's a little bit of confusion or, or what's going on there, but that, that's twice in a row on a third down. Nolan Groff's punt this time finds its way out of bounds. Nice job by Nolan to get that ball up and out of the field. And not in the hands of the dynamic Cameron Jones. Looks like um, Wilson has maybe identified something on film, um, but they look like they're coming after. Looks like they're coming after the punts. That's um, twice that they've almost gotten home on on a on punt block attempt. First and ten for the Bulldogs on the forty-one. Oh, ball's on the ground again. Still a live scramble. Falcons pointing like they have it. And they're going to get their third turnover of the night. Heck, that's the third turnover in one quarter. Coach, defense doing a heck of a job. Yeah, they are. I'll tell you what. Uh, force, you know, if you force three turnovers in the game, you've done a nice job. And like you said, they just forced their third turnover in the uh, in the in the first quarter. Two of them being in their in their own red zone. So this time the, the ball's in Wilson territory. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe put some points on the board. Richards, Richards, finds some space. He's got running room. Richards with a 
about a 20 yard jaunt down to the 12, 13 yard line. Coach got through that first first line of defenders and was off. Yeah, he put, um, got through the first line, made a real nice jump cut out the back and um, you know, turned, on, turned on the speed, got us down inside the red zone here. So getting red zone, you got to get points on the board here. Huber gives the riches again. Lot of water move, dies for the end zone. And touchdown Falcons. Aiden Richards fires through the line of scrimmage and then dives, lays out, stretches the ball over the goal line for six. Real nice run by Richards. So he gets the ball right up the middle, right up the gut. Makes a great effort at the end of the run that stretched up all over the goal line for seven. And without the um, one great play by Cameron Jones, Superchat has really dominated this first quarter. Yeah, absolutely. Benno, Zach Earl with the extra point. And with 335 left in the first quarter, 7-7, seven, seven, heck of a football game so far. Always a good time to remember that the Falcon Foundation has sponsored and bought a lot of the equipment that you're watching the live stream on tonight. So if you have the opportunity to support Cedarcrest Falcon Foundation, please do so. Money goes to a lot of good causes for students and staff to take those resources and use them for extended opportunities. So big thank you to the Falcon Foundation. Cheerleaders throwing out pink shirts, footballs tonight, supporting breast cancer awareness. A lot of the players have pink on too. Lovers kick, keeps it low. Bulldogs ball in the 38. Wilson's had some trouble um, holding on to the ball here. Let's see what we can do here with Cedar Crest. We can get our fourth straight turnover. Coach, I'm, I'm certainly no expert, but I can imagine that the Wilson coaching staff is probably emphasizing to their players to hold on to the ball. I would think that's a, um, a a source of contention right now within that within their uh, huddle over there. I'm sure their coaches are stressing ball security. Um, again, can't put the ball on the, on the turf. Um, you know, you, you show me at the end of a game turnovers and penalty yards, and I can probably tell you, you won the game in most most uh, instances. So, um, you know, Cedar Crest has done a great job being opp opportunistic tonight, and um, you know, creating, causing these turnovers and put themselves in a 7-7 tie now. Again, with the exception of Cameron Jones's um, punt return touchdown, you know, Cedar Crest has won. Hoffman in the shotgun formation. Hand off to number four, Jaden Jones. Tackled by a host of Falcons after about a two yard game. <laughs> 
second and eight. Three receivers to the near side here for the Bulldogs. Yet Hoffman keeps it and just explodes up the middle. Looks like he's gonna get to the end zone, and he does. Another big play score for the Bulldogs there as quarterback Brad Hoffman goes right up the middle, breaks a couple early tackles, and finds his way to the end zone. It looks like it's that read option again. Quarterback counter. Um, able to take it up the middle for a touchdown. That one looked like it was a, uh, a called play. Quarterback counter, they, they pulled their, their guard to kick out the defensive end. Quarterback ducks up, ducks up inside of that and takes it to the house. And with 2.45 on the clock, Bulldogs 14, Falcons 7. I think the Falcons know they're dealing with a juggernaut of a team here when the team gets three turnovers and they're still up 14-7. Falcons certainly know that that's not gonna, those three turnovers aren't gonna hold them over for the rest of the game. You know, big, uh, big drive here, Cedar Press. You know, even if they don't get points, they gotta possess the ball a little bit. Uh, gotta put a couple first downs together and, you know, again, flip, flip the field position. Um, obviously, wanting to score, but at the very least, you need to get a couple first downs and um, let the defense get a, a little bit of a break. They have been on the field an awful lot. Again. Looked like Isaiah Gonzalez returning the kickoff. Had a little trouble pulling it in, picked it up, and took it back to about the 10 yard line. First and ten Falcons, 2.39 on the clock. Flags on the play. Officials indicating false start. It's going to take it back to the five yard line. Coach, tough to stay ahead of the sticks when you get behind them early. Yeah, it sure is. Again, uh, those, are, those are little little plays within the game that, you know, make a huge, huge difference. You know, that five yards, starting starting first and 15, your, your playbook strengths, you're deep in your own end zone. Aiden Richards. Circled up around the two yard line there. So we're gonna have second and 17. So now your, your mindset, you know, becomes Instead of thinking first down, you're thinking I need to get myself some yards to give my punt team some room, uh, some room to operate. Um, you know, it's just you know how big it is. You know, you, you think us, oh, you know, five yards, but um, when you're you're backed up already, it just changes the mindset of, of, of what you're trying to do offensively. Huber fires out to Groff, finds some space. Lowers his shoulder. Ball spotted on the 17 yard line. So we're gonna have third and three. 
maybe third and a long three, almost four. Great nice job. Nice play. Yeah, great job by Coach Kirsch. Again, just doing exactly what we said. Get some yards, um, clear out some space for your punt team, and it also puts you in a position to get a first down here. Third and four, two receivers to both sides. We're off in motion. Huber rolling out to his left. Nice thrown ball to Kaler who gets the first down up to 25. Nice job, hey, getting behind the sticks. Um, coming out, getting the first down deep in your, your area. Um, it's one of their favorite pass plays they always run. They like to run on third down, um, the curl-will combo. And um, looks like Heisey takes the top off of the defense and, and Huber throws a strike inside on the curl route to uh, Kaler. And he's able to uh, pick up a first down. So it looks like Aiden Richards had to come out for a play or so. Or, or so. Maybe an equipment issue. Looks like there might be ch uh, change in a jersey. Maybe there's some blood on his jersey or something. That would be my guess at this point in time. Huber back to pass, finds number 87. Aiden Schomp. Aiden Schomp, but I wanted to double check and make sure. Nice catch from young Aiden who turned it up for a couple yards. Nice looking young athlete, the Falcons coach. Yep. Again, about 6'5. Runs real well for, for his size, has real nice soft hands. Huber's pass for Heisey. Just a little far out wide. And Heisey hit hard after the. Looks like uh, took the play. Wilson switched up their coverage there. They went to cover two. And this corner just squatted in the, reading the quarterback's eyes in the flat and was, was able to put a good hit on Heisey as uh, the ball sailed away. So third and five here. Huber throwing deep to Heisey. Looks like the ball sailed out of bounds before either Heisey or the defender could come down with it. So it's going to bring up fourth and five for the Falcons. Tough series there to lose Richards to an equipment issue. and. They, they did get defense. one first down, and they, uh, you know, got out of the. Uh, Cameron Jones, again, spinning out of it. There is a flag on the play. Check that multiple flags on the play. So despite Cameron Jones getting to the end zone, coach it looked like a block in the back early in the return there. Yeah, I think we had two of them actually. Um, you know, one one. Um, right at the uh, point of, of contact on, on the, um, where the return uh, fielded the ball, and then another one late in the, um, in, the, in the return. But again, what an effort by Cameron Jones. Yeah, yeah Alex Abreu was down on the coverage early and got, got clipped, I think, as they used to call it clipping penalty when yeah. I was growing up. Yeah. I don't think they use that term too much anymore, but. But I'll tell you, again, that whole return for Wilson started with their um, their rush on the punt. Again, makes Groff uh, rush this punt, low, low trajectory out. Coverage is not down there. And, um, you know, Cameron Jones is able to field the ball. And, again, those low line drive, low 
uh, bouncing punts, sometimes are the best punts to be able to return. And we've seen it twice tonight. Yeah. Well, we certainly don't want to give Cameron Jones too, more, uh, too many more opportunities to operate in the open field like that. Bulldogs have scored twice now on, on big plays, and that would have been a third one. But first and 10, ball on their own 25. Screen play. <laughs> Tackled by number 42. I think, I, I think yeah, 24 I, is now 42. Yep, so Aiden Richards had to do a equipment switch there, so Aiden was originally 24, he's now 42, so even though if you're scoring at all, number 42 in your playbook might be John Zhang. It's Aiden Richards right now. Up, brings us to the end of the first quarter. With the score, Bulldogs 14, Falcons 7. Takes us the opportunity to thank our sponsors, JBT Bank, founded in 1873. Jonestown Bank and Trust Company is a local independent community bank with 14 locations in the surrounding Lebanon, Lancaster, and Berks County area. That's right, don't forget to hit JBT up when you're going to the Berkshire Mall there, Wilson fans. Helping local residents, families, and businesses bank on a smile. Heisey's Diner. The food is finer at Heisey's Diner, located on Route 72 north of Lebanon, PA. You know, for Heisey's Diner, couple of our coaches, Lambros and Powers. I know they like to get to Heise's Diner and order the Thanksgiving special. Those guys will take some extra turkey, give him a stick, give him a drumstick, some mashed potatoes, some stuffing, some gravy. They'll take that all day. Powers is a big fan of the extra gravy. First and 10, Bulldogs. Quick handoff. Number four, Jaden Jones explodes up the middle. Similar play for the Bulldogs where they get it to number four, Jones, and right away, and he barrels for seven or eight. Second and three. Hoff and pulls it in. Again, zone read. Your uh, reading the defensive end, defensive end. Crashes okay. down on the on the uh, on the tailback, quarterback keeps and inserts. And he's off for another big gain. Yeah, got, yeah, these, these two, this running back, uh, halfback duo, and they're a real tough stop. Who do you, who do you take away? You know, it's, it, pick your poison. These guys get out into space and tough to tackle. Movement on the line there. All start on the Bulldogs, back them up about five yards. So we have second and 15. Let's see what Wilson decides to do here, see if they try to keep the ball on the ground. Or maybe try to put one in the air. They got man coverage. 
number four, Jaden Jones, found his way through the first wave of Falcon defenders and then had a lot of space to waltz into the end zone for another Bulldog touchdown. Yeah, it looks like uh, looks like Cedar Crest was, uh, maybe had a little bit of a run blitz there. And sometimes the issue when you when you blitz against a, a run is once you get through that first line, you don't, have that, you don't have that second line there. And that's what it looked like happened. Um, he was to the second level before you knew it. Rod right on for the extra point. Woods with the hold, and Rada's kick is good. So with 10-10 on the clock, Bulldogs up 21-7. Jaden Jones. Got the ball and really exploded through the line. And rest was fairly easy. All right, let's see. Coach of the Falcons can, let's field, a, field the kick here and try to get out from the back of our end zone and get some positive plays going. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, a few kickoffs. We haven't been able to field it cleanly. Started ourselves, you know, shot ourselves and put a little bit starting behind um, or start deep in our own territory. See if we can get a good kick return here, give ourselves some momentum. Uh, again, a lot of time to play in the game. Um, the defense has played rather well. Um, you know, two big plays, and then, you know, I, I would consider that last touchdown a big play as well. Otherwise, you know, we're hanging right in there, turned them over three times. Rayu and Gonzalez deep for the Falcons. Rada will kick for Wilson. Gonzalez picks it up. Gets back to about the 17 yard line. First and 10 Falcons, ball in the 17. Huber in that shotgun formation. Richards, the deep back. Ball's on the ground. Richards covers it up. Good effort by Richards, I'll tell you. It looked like, uh, looks like the defender tried to tackle Richards so he couldn't jump on it. Uh, he did get tackled and then still able to get up and, and get on the ball. Coach, um, I was gonna ask you, that's a, that's a rule I'm unaware with. So they're, you know, Richards is going for the ball and then gets tackled. Is, is the guy allowed to tackle? There, it, it's, a, it's a loose ball, anything goes. <laughs> is that right? Oh, yeah, it's, it's uh, anything goes, whatever it takes to get that ball. And um, uh, great job by Richards. He was getting tackled and still found his way out of the guy tackling him to hop on the ball to save an easy score for the Bulldogs. So second and 25. Looks like they had a chance to get yeah, in some space. A nice little play call there. It looked like uh, originally he was gonna go for some big yardage and I'm not sure who the defender was, did a nice job yeah. and, uh, and, and, and making a play one-on-one -on -one space. Uh, Richards came out of that run with a blocker ahead of him and I'll take, take my chances with Richards and one blocker and two defenders a lot of times. But Nice play from the Wilson linebackers there to bottle him up. Huber back to pass. Time. Hits Groff, but a nice play for the Wilson defenders to knock it out of his hand. 
I'll tell you, Cedar Crest likes that um, uh, four, four seams play and um, you know, four goes, and they've been thrown to, to Groff um, all, all year long across the middle, and Wilson has done a nice job of getting their linebackers into depth in, in, into coverage, and they're able to make a play on that. They've done it three times already today. That brings up fourth and 24. Groff will be punting from the back of his end zone. Cameron Jones back to receive the punt, and he handles the ball out of bounds there. Looks like Wilson came after him again. Uh, again, I would say that uh, Nolan Groff has done a fantastic job tonight of just being able to get the punts off. Um, and then even better job that time, keeping it out of the hands of number one. And um, you know, giving, giving the defense a chance to get on the field, make a stop. Yeah, I think certainly uh, Nolan Groff, knowing the pressure is still coming and still catching and getting off quick, he's done a heck of a job. Jaden Jones for about two there. Good pursuit by the linebackers. I think it was uh, 26 Tra Trayvon Zerbian, number 42. Um, oh, that's uh, yep. 42 is Aiden Richards. Aiden Richards. Yeah. Uh, they were making initial contact, and then number 77, I, th I think, is that Tristan Long? I, is that Connor Schwartz? Connor Schwartz. Okay. Yep. Uh, coming in and, and and cleaning up. Eric McLaughlin getting a nice push there on the edge as well. Hoffman back to pass. Ball goes in and out of the hands of Cameron Jones. Hoffman only a second pass of the night. Falcons were lucky that one fell into the plate. I'd look here, Wilson, they put the ball on the ground. I think if I had to, if I had to guess, this is probably three down ter uh, four down territory for them. Uh, third down now, look to get half. Um, but maybe not, maybe they try and put the ball in the air. Hoffman and shotgun, hands off to Jones, slips one tackle, but cleaned up <laughs> by Kaler. Check that. Was that Zerby? I think it was Zerby. Check that. Trayvon Zerby finished the, the job. I think it was Richards on the initial, initially in the backfield. Nice team defense. Yeah, the I'll tell you what. Hey, forced the punt. Three and out. It's like Wilson's trying to play field position here. Check that. That was Connor Schwartz that initially got in the backfield and got his hands on the runner and. Nice job from Schwartz in the defensive line. All right, with 6.56 to go, we got the Bulldogs 21, Falcon 7. Don't forget to support the Falcon Foundation if you live in the Cornwall Lebanon School District community. Provides excellent opportunities for a lot of our students, including all the equipment or majority of the equipment that the live stream is brought to you that is bringing you tonight. The CCHS live stream team under the direction of Mr. Stephen Moyer and Mr. Cody Hassler do a tremendous job of bringing you a, the sights and sounds. Falcon football, nice addition. One of the few good things that came out of last year where we had no fans was this the ability to broadcast to more fans. Hoffman, the quarterback, also the punter. Nice high punt. Fielded by Kaler. Nice fielding in traffic there as a call for the fair catch. Yeah, great job. He lets the ball bounce there, probably bounces inside the 10 yard line. Does a great job utilizing the fair catch to protect himself and gets up, gets up and catches the ball. Falcons have to be thinking long drive. 
maybe even a score here and getting the ball at the second half. I know it's still 6.50 left in the second quarter here, but. Perfect world. Coach Kearse is looking to put a six minute drive together here. Punch one in the end zone. Go into halftime, get the ball coming out. Let's see what we can do here. Well, nice pass from Huber. Groff just couldn't bring it in. Maybe his eyes were looking for some space upfield. Second and 10. Yeah, well thrown ball. Hits, uh, hits Groff right in the hands. Um, just, just tried to, probably took his eye off it, like you said, looking to make a move, run, run without the football. And um, All right, quick pitch to Zerby. Let's check that, quick pitch to Richards. Good gracious. Looks like they ran that triple option again. All right, so we got third and four here. Big down here. Yeah, would love to see the Falcons convert a third down here. What are you looking for, Coach? You want to see a little, little pass? I think run again. If I if I was if I was Wilson right now, I'd be looking for the uh, sprint right. They're going to run a, a curl wheel combination. They're going to get someone in the flat. Well, let's hope that's a timeout and not a false start. Looks like it was delay delay a game. A game. I tell you what, un unlucky, Coach. They've got to a couple third and shorts tonight, and each time they've been backed up. So. Last time they were able to convert. Let's see what we have here. Yep. Again, I would expect the curl wheel combination. It's so about third and nine. Well, looked like a back pass to Richards, and even if he would have pulled that one in, there was a couple – Bulldog defenders right on him. Yeah, they had that well scouted out. It looked like they were going to the screen pass out the backside to Richards. And uh, they had it all, uh, Wilson did a good job of sniffing that out and, and had it well covered. So three and out for the Falcons. It looks like Wilson's gonna come after it again. Well, Groff had a little more time to kick one there, and the only good news about that pun was that Cameron Jones didn't get a chance to field it. Looks like they're gonna spot the ball at about the 35 yard line. Again, I think we're doing a, uh, Cedar Crest is doing a strategic job right now of trying to punt away from Cameron Jones. Now, Cameron Jones is already Returned one for a touchdown and returned a second one that was called back for a penalty. So I think most Falcon fans would rather see their team work the ball up the field than Cameron Jones get it in one shot. Hoffman back to pass. Throws a rifle to number nine, TJ Flight. <laughs> He gets into the end zone for another seven. It looks like uh, Cedar Crest has came out in man coverage. Similar play to the first, second play of the last series where the ball just fell incomplete. This time hits the receiver right on the money and gets into the end zone for seven. Rada's kick, up and good. And with 5.36 left in the clock, Bulldogs 28, Falcons seven.
gonna need a big drive here, Coach. Um, kind of stop the bleeding here. Try to get some points on the board before we go into halftime. Um, get some points on the board here before we go into that. We do get the ball back. Cedarcrest gets the ball back after half. Um, you know, again, so this is a big drive. Um, and certainly need to get a couple first downs. Don't want to have to punt it on three and out and, and give Wilson another opportunity to put some more on the board here before half. So, uh, you know, we want, to, we want to make sure we control the ball. Uh, get a couple first downs to start, then start thinking score. Um, but we definitely want to take some of the time off the, off the clock here and um, make sure we're not giving it to Wilson with too much time on, on, on the clock to uh, you know have another opportunity to put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, big big change just in the last minute of the play clock. A minute ago we're talking about, hey, Falcons can sustain a drive and hopefully get it within a touchdown. And now they're hoping to sustain a drive and probably keep themselves in the game. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. You know, and, and I, I, I go back to it. Cedar Crest did well in their scoring drive. I know they, they uh, it was a short field. Well, they're running the ball and running the ball up the middle. And, you know, I we got plenty of time on the clock. I'd, I'd start to, uh, you know, really try to reestablish that run. Abreu fields the ball cleanly, gets up to the 23, 24 yard line. Nice to see Alex Abreu grab that with a full head of steam. You know, Cedar Crest got a, there's no 21 point play. Okay, so they got they to go one score at a time here. So that's got to be their mindset. They got to be, a positive play is one down at a time. They don't got to, they don't got to, um, there's plenty of game to go. He's got to win one down at a time here and, and not try and do too much too early. Cooper back. Throws a heck of a ball. Heisey climbs the ladder. Pulls it down. Ethan Heisey, a heck of a junior receiver. So it was a, he just showed great body control on that. The ball was a little bit behind. He was able to flip his hips, get both hands on the ball, catch it as he was getting hit. Real nice receiver play right there. Well done. All right, second and one. Richards in the backfield. Looks like, like eight men in the box for the Bulldogs. Richards up the middle. Richards finding space. 20, 15, caught down at the 10 yard line. Coach, you called it. Let's run the ball up the middle. They do it there. And now it's first and goal from the five. Nice job. Again, real nice job at the point of attack by the offensive line. And the one thing that Richards does is he sees a hole and he hits the hole. And um, he has real good, real good first step. And he gets there. And, and he's, on, he's in the second level and uh, able to get a big gain. First and goal from the eight where the ball is spotted. Richards again. This time, number 51, Bulldogs, grabs him early and tosses him backwards. Elian Rodriguez, a nice play. Motion, you can't throw a guy three yards backwards. Second and nine here for the Falcons. Coach, is this, this four down territory to get a touchdown? Oh, man, it's, it, it's, it's tough. I think you guys see where you're at on, on, uh, on fourth down. Huber rolling right. Right to the ball to number 11, Heisey. Looked like that was Cameron Jones broke on the ball and could have easily yeah. taken that to the other end zone. Looks like, again, uh, Cameron Jones playing corner. Looks like they rolled covers to the trip side, and he just squats on the um, on the out route and you know makes, makes a nice play. All right, third and nine. Love to see. Off or shop over the middle here. Let's see what we got. 
Huber back, rolling right. Groff kind of sat down in the middle there, but a host of Bulldogs broke on the ball. Yeah, that's a, that's a, tough, that's a tough play. That's almost uh, rule number one for a quarterback. You don't throw across your body late down the middle. Um, you know, we were able to avoid a big, big play right there. That's one of those plays. You're down in the red zone. You're in the score zone. Uh, I, I know he's just trying to make a play for his team, but he's got he's to throw that one out of bounds, uh, live the play, another play, get a chance to kick, put points on the board. Um, and he took a shot on top of it. So Benno, Zacharel, number 41 on for the field goal attempt. Kick is up. Kick is good. Benno, Zach Earl. With the field goal. About a 26, 27 yard field goal. Nice to get points on the board. 28, 10 with 3.15 on the clock. Yeah, that was a big drive. I mean, it, any, anytime you get points on the board, um, you know, kind of stop the bleeding a little bit. It was just exactly what we talked about. Now, remember, we're getting, uh, Cedar Crest getting the ball after halftime. Um, there is still three minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock. I think uh, Wilson has two timeouts left. So we need a great defensive stop here. We get a defensive stop, get the ball coming out at halftime. You, know, you go down there, you, you, you punch one in. Guys, you're, you're right back in the football game. No, you're absolutely right, Coach. We're a lot of, a lot of, not pressure, but uh, certainly a lot of weight putting on the defense here to get a big stop and keep that momentum flowing. And you know we've we've turned them over three times in the first half or in the first quarter. Um, Wilson doesn't like to throw the ball. You know, here, here's an opportunity. They come out, maybe throwing the ball, make a mistake, don't do something that they're comfortable with. You know, puts the ball back in your hands, and who knows, maybe we can punch another one in here. Yep. Put some more points on the board before the uh, end of the half. Lover rolling it. Number 89, the up man for the Bulldog, fields it. Brady Klein, number 89 in your scorebook if you're scoring at home. Feels that. Well done by the young man. Catch it, get a couple yards up the field. Obviously, the Falcons are doing everything they can to keep the ball out of the Bulldogs' playmakers' hands. And they've been dangerous when they do get the ball in space. TJ Flight tackled behind the line of scrimmage. It looks like they ran a little bit of a little bit of a reverse, if you will. And again, Aiden Richards has just done a great job this all year playing sideline to sideline. And um, just like when he's running the ball defensively as well, he sees it, he sees that gap, he hits it and attacks the ball carrier. Does a nice job. Hop and back to pass. Time. Incomplete. So we got third and 14 here. We were like, looking for a stop here. This would be a heck of a play to get a stop on. I'll tell you what. Um, Cedar Crest sat back in a cover three right there. Xavier Murky stayed on top of the route, was able to make a great break on it, break the pass up. That was well done by number seven at the top of the field. Hop and back to pass again. It looks like it's an underneath screen. And number four, Jaden Jones is gonna be a yard and a half short. That's a call for Wilson if they're gonna go for it. Looks like they are. Yeah, it looks like the offense is staying on now. With the clock click. 
ticking down. Maybe they try to draw him off sides. Maybe they just go for it. Pretty big play here. This would give the Falcons a really short field if the Falcons can find a way to get a stop here. Timeout from Coach Wildeson. I like that call, you know. Um, take a timeout, be sure of what you're in. Um, let Wilson think about it a little bit as well. You know, maybe they trot their punter out right now. But, uh, you know, it's such a big down, such a big play in the game. You know, call timeout, make sure, make sure you ha have exactly what you want. Yeah, I agree. So 1.52 on the clock, it's fourth and one, a long one for Wilson. We're gonna see what happens. Stick around at halftime. Wilson's band will be performing and we'll keep the cameras on and rolling for all those fans in West Lawn looking to watch the Wilson band perform. Cedar Crest High School band will be performing after the game tonight. All right, here we go, fourth and one. Falcons are putting eight, nine in the box. Hoffman on the keeper gets three yards in the first down. He went quick there, coach. Is that? Uh... Yeah, I think you know. Again, that the Wilson thought about what they wanted to do. They wanted to come out. They went a quick count, quarterback sneak, which is a, a common play. Falcons definitely hoping to stop now. Hoffman steps up, throws a ball. Flag on the play. Ball certainly was out of bounds and not very catchable, but we'll see what the call is. Both the defensive back and wide receiver were kind of fighting for the ball. Yeah, I, I agree with this call. They're going to call this on the offense, and I saw the whole time um, Kaler did a very nice job. He was in his hip. Number nine pushed off of him. Um, and, you know, the ball was uncatchable to begin with, but what a big penalty for... Wilson back them up with about a minute and 26. Again, when you, you put a team in this, in a position to do something they're not comfortable doing, they're going to make mistakes, and uh, you know that's that's where where Cedar Crest has got to get Wilson in the second half. Put him in positions to do things they're not comfortable with. Throw the ball. Um, you know that's going to mean win on first down, win on second down. Put him in third and predictable passing situations, and um, you know, again, easier said than done. Coach, forgive me if I'm wrong, that's a 15-yard penalty for yeah. an offensive pass. Yes, it is. Interference. So we've got first and 25. <laughs> Hoffman with the keeper, finding space, dragged down after getting those 15 yards back. So it's going to be second and 10. about the 48 yard line. The clock continues to roll. So we're down to about a minute on the play clock or the game clock, check that. Nice pressure from the Falcon defensive line. McLaughlin, number 85 won't be recorded as a sack, but certainly, certainly had the feel of a the sack there, getting him before he turned into a runner. Third and eight. Flag on the play. Quarterback, Hoffman throws it up, but there's a flag on the play. Coach, looked like a hold. Yeah, I think it's going to be a holding call. Uh, again, those defensive ends doing a nice job of applying some pressure, and um, the tackle is nothing else, uh, nothing else he can do but hold. Coach, can you decline 
this? Does this make it fourth and eight? Is that an option, or do you back I, him up? I, I back him up. I take it. There's 19 seconds left. Make him run another play. Uh, put him behind the sticks. <laughs> Well, Coach Wilson declined it. And that's why he's a head coach. That's I'm why he's with you, Coach. Right. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. And that's why we get paid the big bucks to comment and not actually make any real decisions. So, 19 seconds. Hoffman in punt formation. Kaler back deep for the Falcons. Let's see if we can make a little magic on the punt return here. Off in a very high kick. Taylor yells clear out. It's going to be down with about seven seconds on the game clock. Coach, do you take a shot here? Just do you throw one deep? <laughs> you, you, you kneel down here. I mean, well, I, I, I'm, I over, I'm over for one right now. Um, I'm, I'm probably I'm probably taking an ego in the half. Um, that, that, that would be me. Um, just want anything crazy to happen where, you know, drop back, sure. you know, fumble, strip strip sack, yep. throw an interception, it gets returned. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm probably taking a knee, headed into half halftime and So the Falcons will take a knee here. Headed into halftime. Falcons ten. Bulldogs twenty eight. <laughs> All right, Coach, we'll be back in 15 minutes with the second half of play. Before we do that, once again, thank our sponsors, Jonestown Bank and Trust, Heise's Diner, and don't forget to support the Falcon Foundation. We'll plug them again right before the beginning of the third quarter. So enjoy the 15 minutes here. We'll be back.
But should I? <laughs> Congratulations, we're so proud of you. Of course I'm not going to misjudge the heist.
All right, we are we are back for the second half. Before we get started, shout out to a couple people hanging out: Stella, Anna, and Jacqueline watching from home. Thanks for listening, you three crazies. Also, thanks to the Jonestown Bank and Trust Company, founded in 1873. JBT is a local independent community bank with 14 locations in the surrounding Lebanon, Lancaster, and Berks County area. You can stop at JBT, probably in Berks County, before you hit that Fromu tennis store. <clears throat> Helping local residents, families, and businesses bank on a smile. JBT. Also, Heisey's Diner, the food is finer at Heisey's Diner, located in Route 72. You know they got the football game going on in the back room there. You got some good taxidermy when you come right at the door. Abreu fields it. Gets a tackle, finds space. Takes it up to the 30 yard line. Nice return from Alex Abreu to get the Falcons some good field position to start the second half. He might have had a Salisbury steak from Heisey's Diner at halftime. All right, coach, what do we need to do? Uh, this is an important drive. Um, again, 28-10, we're, we're in this game. Um, again, I th I'd like to see him put the ball on the ground, establish that run again. Uh, good things happen when, they, when they've run the ball. And, um, you know, put a couple first downs together, get some points on the board. Hand off to Richards. Bottled up right at the line of scrimmage by number 21, 33, 54, and 51 from the Bulldogs. Gruber. Rodriguez and Ramsey all on the combined tackle. Second and 11. Coach, you called up for that run up the middle. Last, last quarter and you got it. Huber with time. Wow. Nice. That is a great grab. Um, looks like number a freshman number 12, Jack Warnavich. Great job coming back to the ball, catching the ball with his hands. Um, very nice. Excellent catch, kept his feet in bounds, moved the chains, nice to get a first down on their first drive here. Yeah, absolutely. Check that was Groff on the reception of the last play, but still nice job by Nolan Richards out wide, turns it up. A couple good yards there. Staying on schedule, they're doing a nice job. Um, again, not not uh, playing from behind the sticks. It wasn't a great game, but again, um, you, know, you put yourself in a position to be successful in second and third down when you're playing in front of the sticks. Second and eight. Huber throws it. Kaler had a step on his defender. The ball was slightly underthrown. Kaler had to make a nice play coming back on and throws it up. Eric Jackson, the Bulldog defender. Yeah, if we just could have got it over, um, Keller had it looked like three to four yards and um, did a nice job coming back to the ball and, and, and turn it into the defender. Uh, now we're at a third and eight. I feel like the Falcons are gonna hit one of those over the middle seam plays that they've, they've hit in the past. At some point in this game. Huber rolls, finds Richards, who 
was. Came back, made the play, turned the corner, had all sorts of space and fell down. Boy, coach, he stays on his feet there. I would have liked to see what that end result would have been. Yeah, the great job coming back to the ball. Makes a nice catch. Defender slips, and then he slipped right after him. Um, man, he'd still be running, I think, coach. But, uh, great job by uh, Jay Huber keeping the, the, uh, the ball, uh, the, the play alive and finding Richards for a um, for first down. Hand off to Richards with a head of steam, pushing through the pile for a gain of eight or nine. Official timeout. Official timeout. Real nice drive they got going here, Coach. I think um, you know two third down conversions, um, two first downs. We are at second and short right now, and um, you know I think this is exactly what Coach Wilson and, and um, the offensive staff talked about doing in, in the, um, coming out here in, in the first half and putting it, putting the drive together. Again, let's put, put some points on the board, and make this game a little interesting. Yep. My next question, Coach, is what what is the game? What's in a perfect world, what's a scenario to, for the Falcons to get back in this game? <clears throat> Again, uh, almost like I talked about a little bit there towards the end of the second half. You know, got to go one play at a time. Uh, you know, again, down 18 points right now. They don't have an 18-point play. There's no 18-point play in anyone's playbook. Um, you just got to execute one play at a time, um, both offensively and defensively. You know, they want to come out here, put some points on the board, you know, preferably a touchdown. Um, and then they put the defense out there and get one stop. You know, that's, that's all you're trying to think. You're not thinking about trying to win the game in one possession. Get one stop and, um, you know, go one possession at a time. Um, you know, try and win each possession and, and then you get yourself back in the, in the, in the football game. A lot of pink in the crowd tonight in support of breast cancer awareness and nice to see the student section in all pink. Falcon Nation, one of the best student sections around. All right, second and two as the official winds the clock. Huber with the pump fake, throws the ball up. <laughs> Has the ball! Touchdown! Ethan Heisey, who wrestles it from the defender's grasp. Well thrown ball right into the breadbasket. Ethan Heisey holds on to it. Oh my goodness, make that kid a milkshake from Heisey's diner. Let's go, seven points, six points for the Falcons. Nice play. Awesome play, awesome route. Second and short, great time to take a shot. Uh, Coach Kears called a shot play, double move down here by Heisey, and um, Huber does a nice job putting the ball out there. The defender made a nice play, but like you said, Heisey just went up, wanted the ball a little more, wrestled it out. Six points. And the extra point is good. Benno Zach Earl pounds the ball through the uprights. And just like that, 28 17. Nice opening drive for the second half. Like you said, coach, two first downs and hit hit the hit Heisey down the sideline for a, for six. Special teams has been a uh, an issue for the Falcons tonight. Um, 
late in the half, they went away from kicking the ball to uh, Jones. It looks like my guess is they're going to try to put the ball on the ground here, uh, keeping it away from Jones again. Glover to kick for the Falcons. Kind of a low squibber, see if it stays in. It does, fielded at about the nine yard line with a head of steam and blockers out in front. One man to beat. And coach, you said it, special teams has been a, certainly a difference maker in the game tonight and the Bulldogs, Not only did they field it, but had some really good blocking on that play and good blocking plus the explosive Cameron Jones is leads to six more points. He's a little different out there tonight, isn't he? I'll tell you what, uh, three phases of football game, you know, offensively and defensively, I think Cedar Crest and Wilson have been very comparable tonight. You know, the, the phase of the game that has been the difference in the game has without about without a doubt been the special teams. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, even if you look at Cedar Crest a number of times, unable to field the ball cleanly, starting with, you know, bad field positions just because they can't field the ball cleanly on kickoffs. Um, you know, obviously we, we know about the, the punt return, the kickoff return. Um, the, the, the punt rush that Wilson has put on, that's led to the, the punt returns. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's glaring right now. Um, you know, the, the difference in that, in that aspect of the game. Yeah, it, it certainly looked like it. Uh, that kickoff had the opportunity to maybe get a stop, but Jones picked the ball up, and as you looked up the field, the other 10 players on the Wilson team had blocks established and were holding it, and Cameron just had to kind of make his path and make a man or two miss. And he found his way to the end zone. You know, just like I was about to say that Ethan Heisey certainly has an opportunity to next couple years to find his way onto a collegiate team. I would say Cameron Jones probably has some people looking at him as well. Yeah, I would think uh, Cameron Jones listed as here a junior. a kick for the Bulldogs. Abreu and Gonzalez. Smart play there from Gonzalez to let that ball roll out of bounds. And the flag comes out and Falcons will start. On the 35 coach? Yes sir. So here we go. Hopefully the offense comes out with the same intensity they did as they did right out of the half here. No reason not to. Huber in the shotgun formation. Looks like they went back to that little bit of that uh, two-man option route. Yeah, Huber on the keeper and was bottled up quickly. So it's going to be second and about 14. Huber back to pass. Finds Nolan Groff. Nice job, catch and run. Um, you know, again, making a play. And, the, and what I like about that is didn't go out of bounds, loaded his shoulder, trying to get an extra yard. Yeah. So 
third and seven. Huber's throwing a lot of nice balls tonight to receivers. Putting them in position to get some of that yak. Well, next time I gotta make sure I feel like I jinxed Huber there as I gave him a good compliment and the off a defensive line made a nice play and batted that ball down at the line of scrimmage. Brings up a fourth and seven. Tough play. Looks like he had a guy open. Um, defensive line did a nice job just getting his hands in the air, getting a touch on the ball. Um, Brings up fourth down here for the Falcons. That was number 52. Groff with a really nice punt. Abreu just about had the chance to tackle Jones. About 20 yards further back down the field, but Jones explodes through the arm tackle and took about five Falcons to take him down. Seven forty-seven on the game clock. This is the first time we're gonna see the Wilson offense this half. Hoffman gives the ball to the deep back, Jaden Jones. Second and six. Uh, Jaden Jones through the line, flag on the play. Six flag is thrown in the area of holding. Looks like it's coming back. I'd expect right now with the uh, score what it is to get an awful lot of that uh, read option that, that they've been running with the quarterback and tailback. So the holding call that backs up Wilson 10 yards, going to make it second and 15. Ball in the 43. Hoffman on the keeper. Hoffman runs for a first down to Falcons 36. Quarterback's a tough runner, man, I'll tell you. Um, hits the hole, and once he's running the football, he doesn't look like a quarterback. You know, he looks like a running back out there, and. Um, Multiple so guys seem to have by the legs. <laughs> he, he finds his way out of it. He sure does. Tough one two combination with Jones and Hoffman for the Bulldogs. Oh, balls on the ground. Scoop. Scoop up. Scoop up for the Falcons. Number 42, you guessed it. That's normally number 24, but that's Aiden Richards. He scoops the ball up as Eric McLaughlin comes in for the sack and strips the ball as he's sacking Hoffman. Richards picks it up for a scoop and scores seven. 
I'll tell you what, Coach, um, you know, we talked a little bit about putting Wilson in situations where they're not comfortable doing things. Um, again, passing the ball is not in their comfort zone. We had them behind the sticks. We were able to put a pass rush together, get a strip sack, and, and here we are. You know, right back in this football game. A another huge turnover for the Falcons. This one is a scoop and score for six. Benno Zabu. High and straight down the middle. Adds another point. And just like that, it's 35-24. Bulldogs up. What a defensive play. Eric McLaughlin comes around the edge hard. Gets to Hoffman. Looks like he's going to get the sack, but all of a sudden the ball is bouncing free on the turf. And Richards, along with a host of other Falcons, could have anybody could have picked it up, but I'll tell you what, always good to have your star running back pick it up and head towards the end zone. You know, I think that, again, kudos to, to Aiden Richards. Um, you know, big players make big plays at, at big time times, and that, and that was right there. And, you know, he's just such a good football player. He's always around the ball. So the ball is going to find his hands a lot because um, he's always where he needs to be. He's always making plays and he's always around the football. So, again, Sear Crest needed a big play, and, 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 and sure enough, you know, we've called Eric McLaughlin's name a number of times throughout this year. Um, and there was him making another big play and ball bouncing into the hands of uh, Richards. All right, so the Falcons are kicking off here. I'm assuming they're not going to kick it. Turns around. I couldn't even finish my sentence there. I was going to assume they're not going to kick it to, to Jones. And... Uh, uh, quick squib kick right up the middle. Wilson falls on it, and I tell you what, the way that Jones has been electric tonight returning the ball, I think most fans in the stands are going to take giving the Bulldogs the ball on the 38-yard line. I mean, with the way he's returned the ball, with what Cedar Crest's defense have done to Wilson's de our offense, turning them over four times, Make him drive the field. Make him make him run a play. Make him handle the ball. Well, number four, Jaden Jones, showing that hey, give me the ball and let me get some space. And turns it up for about a little over 30 yards. Official timeout of the field. <laughs> With 5.48 on the clock, the officials time out. Good time to thank our sponsors, the JBT Bank, founded in 1873. Jonestown Bank and Trust Company is a local independent community bank with 14 locations in the surrounding Lebanon, Lancaster, and Berks County. JBT helping local residents and families in businesses, bank, on a smile. I like the little video boards when I pull through the JT Bank and Trust when I talk to the, the nice individuals helping me with my banking. Get a nice video chat with them. Heisey's Diner. The food is finer at Heisey's Diner. Located on Route 72, north of Lebanon. Heisey's Diner. Whether you're going for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, food is finer. Tell you what, tomorrow morning, I think Aiden Richards could go for the He-Man special right now. That would be the give them some pancakes, some eggs, some French toast. Make sure you throw some meat and sausage and bacon on there, too. Kids had a heck of a game. All he's right, had, Go ahead. he's had a heck of a two weeks. I was going to say, coach, he's had a heck of a two weeks and heck of a season to be, to be quite honest with you. Yep. Aiden, a special player. Bulldogs hand off to number two, Gavin Leonard. First time we've called Leonard's name tonight. That's a game by number 72. 
Brings up a second and three. I'll tell you, um, almost every time Cedar Crest has, has, has made a run and, and got themselves within striking distance, um, Wilson has, has, has put some drive together. Uh, but Cedar Crest's defense has done a great job inside the red zone today and uh, turned in the ball over a couple times, see if they can work some of that magic again. Off in to throws it up. Chernich, I believe, had a look at picking that ball off. Chernich made a nice break on the ball and had a chance at it. Yeah, he read it, looked like he read it perfectly, made a great break, like you said, and the ball just slipped uh, through his hands. Well, flag on the play. So I was looking downfield at the catch. So the hold on the Bulldog line is gonna back it up. Make it second and 16. So here we go, we got, uh, we got Wilson in, in the down and distance that they are not comfortable with. Um, let's see if they put the ball on the, on the, on the floor here or if they are going to um, try and throw it. But again, they have not had too much success throwing the ball. Hoffman to, Hoffman to Jaden Jones is stood up by number 77 and number 21. Zion Durant, number 77. Connor Schwartz, Schwartz got there first. Durant finished it, good team tackling. Go, you're down. Get off, the, get off the field. We got third and third and long. Here's where I think we can unleash our defensive ends. We've been getting a lot of pressure all game long. Hoffman yep. back to pass. Pressure come up. Throws the ball up. Hoffman throws the ball, but. Good coverage on the top side. Yeah. Uh, um, I think that was uh, that Xavier, Xavier Murky, I yep. think, with Mur a little little bit of help from uh, Owen Chernich. Murky on the coverage. <laughs> Not exactly sure who the bulldog receiver was. Tough to see at the far end of the stadium. Both the defensive back and receiver were fighting for that ball. Looks like it was number six, coach. Number six. All right, well, we'll have to check with the Wilson staff as we don't seem to have a six on our roster, but. Number six and the Bulldogs fighting for that play. So we got fourth and 16. With 4.07 on the clock here. Bulldogs in punt formation. Now their quarterback Hoffman has punted the first couple times. This time is number 27, Rada, their normal place kicker. So. Rada. Ball checks up right about the 12 yard line and down at about the 14 by Cameron Jones. So it's gonna be first and 10 for the Falcons. Ball on the 14 yard line. It's like there's a, a penalty. All right, so we got a, another penalty. I'm guessing they're going to make the Bulldogs punt it again. Yep. So we got a penalty on the field. Backing. I didn't see what the call was from the official yet. Looks like they're backing up 10 yards. I'm assuming a hold, Coach. I think it was a hold before the punt. Yep. So with that, the 
officials place the ball on the 52-yard line on the Bulldogs' own 52 yards. They're gonna have to punt again. So another opportunity for Kaler to maybe feel the need. Get the ball up the field a little bit more. So it's about fourth and 36 here. Oh man, what nice punt. punt. And that's about a one yard differential game there. Yeah. Heck of a punt from number 27. Yes, it was. Ben Rada. Yes, it was. Just when you think you could get 10, 15 yards maybe, maybe something else. Bulldogs special teams again tonight. I think we've said that before, huh, Coach? Yep. I'll, I'll tell you, and, and you know, otherwise, I mean, it's an it's a, um, 11 point game. You know, minus those two touchdowns, you know, Cedar Crest is winning. Yes, you're absolutely right. So, 3.53 in the clock. Huber looking for Heisey. Good coverage from the Bulldogs there. Heisey got a little bit pressured and had to get it out. So second and ten. Quick handoff to Abreu. Gets through the first tackle and up to about the 18 yard line. So we're gonna have about third and seven. Big third down conversion here. We'd like to see them keep moving the this is where they like to hit Groffy over the middle Huber stepped up and he is caught behind the line and thrown down by number 67 of the Bulldogs number 67 Dominic Memo, Dominic Memo. with the sack Wow, I tell you what, he puts the Falcons in another special teams opportunity. Raw fact to punt. Uh, assuming they've probably coached him up to get the ball away from Cameron. Cameron, oh. wait, balls to the ground. Cameron Jones, the ball was slowing down. It looked like he had space. You can't blame a kid that's already returned two for trying almost three to pick it up and run. And it was on the deck, trickled out of bounds. Oh, so close, so close. It's first and 10 for the Bulldogs on the 40 yard line. Defense has come up with four turnovers. Why not a fifth? Quick handoff to Jaden Jones. Number 89. A nice block out front for the Bulldogs. Brady Klein leading the way, clearing the path. So we got first and ten ball in the twenty-four. Jaden Jones again on the carry. 
McLaughlin on the nice tackle. Time out of the field. Well, there I am. My girls are watching at home. <laughs> I got a text from my wonderful wife. I said, hey, why aren't they showing you more at home? I said, well, nobody wants to see me. But <laughs> girls, if you're watching still, which I can't imagine they are. <laughs> nice to see everybody. Coach Smith and I have a, as Coach Bird would say, a good face for radio. <laughs> no doubt about that. Again, still within striking distance here. If we can, um, you know, figure out a way to get a stop here down the red zone, which we've done a fantastic job of all night. Uh, you know, still in, this, still in this game, getting into the fourth quarter. Right, even if they can hold the Bulldogs to a field goal here, keep it a two-score game. Certainly something that defense would do everything in their power to do. A lot of cramping tonight, Coach, and, and again, unusually hot for, for October, uh, mid-October Friday night. Yeah. Um, but beautiful night for here for football. Yep. It, it's not just warm, but it, it, especially the start of the game was, was humid down there, so certainly you can imagine guys are playing both sides of the ball, losing some fluids, and got some guys cramping up. All right, as the officials get the get set to wind the clock here. It's second and seven, ball in the 21, 141 on the clock. Bulldogs with the ball. Hand off to Jaden Jones, who's gonna come up about a yard or two short here. It's gonna be third and two, third and three. Cedar Crest has done a great job all year, or uh, all game. And, and all year, um, you know, once the opposing team gets in the red zone, of uh, keeping them out of the end zone, and you know, tonight forcing a bunch of turnovers. So let's see what we can do here. Big third down. Right, third and three. You can only imagine it's going to be either Hoffman or Jones on the that option, and it's Jones. Falcons hit him. It's going to be a close. It's going to come down to where a good spot is. Thought they had him right on the other side of the 15-yard line. Line officials spotting it on the 14. Tough spot. Mm, looks like they're moving, moving the, chains. the chains. Boy, I really thought he was on the east. The, the, the side of the 15 that wouldn't have given him the first down, but the spot is closer to the 14, and that's why they're on the field, and I'm up in the booth. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Jones is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Zion Durant. Um, kept his, his gap integrity, and um, the Wilson running back cut right into him and he's able to make a play. Nice play. Yeah, we've certainly seen these long situations for Wilson be a problem. We're gonna find out what it's gonna look like beginning of the fourth quarter here. It's at the end of the third quarter with the score, Wilson Bulldogs 35, Cedarcrest Falcons 24. So we're gonna switch ends, which gives me the opportunity to thank our live stream sponsors tonight. JBT Bank, founded in 1873. Jonestown Bank and Trust Company is a local independent community bank with 14 locations in the surrounding Lebanon, Lancaster, and Berks County areas. JBT, helping local residents, families, and businesses bank on a smile.
Heisey's Diner. The food is finer at Heisey's Diner, located on Route 72 north of Lebanon. Heisey's Diner. You can get any kind of meal you want there, and it's all good. Nothing says, I know it's still warm outside, but as this fall season turns, gets a little colder, I love stopping in for some cream of broccoli soup. Give me an extra pack out of those crackers, saltines, crumble them up. Let's go. And I believe an endless cup of coffee. All right, fourth quarter here. Bulldogs, second and nine. Looks like a sweep. Officials are blowing it dead. It looks like he might have got a first down. Coach, this is why we need that bend, don't break defense, huh? Yeah, got to come up big right now. Looks like we're first and goal to go from the two. Cameron Jones gets the direct snap. Good gracious, that would be a tough play to stop. And Cameron walks into the end zone untouched for his, I tell you what, I don't know what the stat is, but he has run one in, returned a punt in, returned a kick in. Uh, thank goodness we kept him from uh, pick six in, and he would have had a fourth way to score, but heck of a player scores again tonight. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been electric all night. Draw to there for the extra point. And it's good with 11:46 left. In the fourth quarter, Falcons 24, Bulldogs 42. Well, here's where we gotta. Use that quick strike offense and get the, you know, get another turnover, get a stop. There's no reason that we can't get a couple scores. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, still a lot of time left, just under, um, you know, just under 12 minutes to start the, the fourth quarter here. Um, no panic, you know. First things first, we need we need to put some points on the board. So by any means necessary, got to put some points on the board. Um, don't have to abandon the run. Number two, Donovan Adams. Number 15, Alex Abreu, back deep for the Falcons. The Bulldogs have been nothing short of sensational on special teams tonight. And really, really the difference of the game, Coach. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, really is. Um, you know, we have, we have a home run hitter back there. We're turning the kick right now, too. Um, let's see if we can... If Alex Abreu can find a, a hole in the... Uh... All right, Adams with the ball, with the chance. Gets stood up about the 23-yard line. <laughs> I've already gone too far in this game, Coach, without thanking the students who work all the equipment behind us. The CCHS live stream team does a phenomenal job. Coach and I are out here calling the game, but there are all students behind us working the cameras, behind the scenes, in the truck. Doing a fantastic job of bringing the game live to you. Huber's pass to Heise is complete. They've done an incredible job all week. I know they did a volleyball game. Um, I think, did they do a, uh, I think they did another event this week. Uh, did, did the tennis match this yeah. week as well? Yeah, so we, had, we hosted the Lancaster 11 League Tennis Tournament. Uh, and cross country as well. Cross so country. They've had a busy week. They've, yeah. done, they've done a great job of being a little bit everywhere this week. Yeah. These are... Thank <laughs> you. 
Gonzalez stood up at the line of scrimmage. You know, the, the live stream team has done a fantastic job bringing you broadcasts of just about every fall sport so far. Uh, really nice program they have going here at the high school led by Mr. Cody Hassler and Mr. Steve Moyer working with the, the crew tonight. All right, third and nine. Need a first down here, coach, to keep the keep it moving. Huber rolls to his left. Doesn't have anybody open downfield and wisely throws it away. Not much else he could have done there. Fourth and nine brings out the punt team. It looks like. I think this is um, 87, 80 shop, eight and shop in uh, punt formation. Number 87, eight and shop. <laughs> Who actually. Really had a nice punt there, Aiden. And once again, Cameron Jones. Flag on the play. Uh, yeah, looks it wasn't like he's going to come back and help the, yeah. help uh, help Cedar Crest with some field position here. I'm kind of glad we don't have a statistician in the booth right now, adding up all the ways Cameron Jones would be accruing yards tonight because. It's tough to imagine with all of his special teams yards in the offensive yards that he wouldn't have over 200 plus yards. Yeah, I think he probably uh, definitely did that close to that 200 yard mark. And that's not even to mention the ones that have been called back. All right, with the flag, it's gonna be Bulldogs ball, first and 10 from their own 37. 9.54 on the clock, 42-24 Bulldogs. Hoffman with the keeper. Zerby with the tackle. Is that uh, that high knee, high leg drive? Is that a is that a taught skill from Brad Hoffman, or is that just a natural athlete, just just able to kind of drive those legs like that? I think it's probably a little bit of both. You know, as as a uh, as a runner, you, you're you're taught to run with high knees, and um, I'm sure if you remember Robert Smith, I can always remember him when I was younger, watching him run. He Ohio run State. His, yeah, he used to run with his high knees. Um, so it's definitely a. Uh, a taut skill. I, I do appreciate the Robert Smith reference of Ohio State there. I was thinking more like Eric Dickerson. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. appreciate your sweetness. Walter Payton used to run like that as well. Yeah. Go oh, for sure. So after that play, there was a little extracurricular activity from both sides of the ball. See what happens here. Looks like a personal foul on Wilson. So it's gonna back him up 15 yards. <laughs> Coach Robert Smith, he was a, he was a, a Viking or a Titan? That's, remind me. He was, uh, he was a Viking. Viking, yeah. Viking. Eddie George was a Titan. Eddie, that's, that's, yes. Eddie George was the Titan. Forgive me for not having been sharp with my Ohio State running back. <laughs> Keith Myers? Keith yeah. Myers was yeah. an eagle, though. Yes, he was. 
tell you what, you can't play Super Tech Bubble without getting some Keith Myers and Keith Sherman action out there. Yeah, they, they were bad. Hey, they were no match, though, for uh, Bo Jackson and Marcus <laughs> Allen. Oh. All right, first, second and 19 for the Bulldogs after the personal foul. Jaden Jones taken down in the backfield by number 21, Zion Duran. bring up third and 20. Hoffman back to pass, he's getting pressure. Looks like a screen set up. Nice job. I think it was 89 Klein on the reception. Falcons had it sniffed out. It's gonna bring up a fourth and a lot. Fourth and a lot. Well, 741. Still open. Falcons get a quick store score. Another another stop, but certainly the clock not in their favor. Let's see if Braden Kaler can have a shot at this return that. Bulldogs have done a nice job punting. Rada deep for the Bulldogs. Oh, ooh, I take that back. That was Hoffman. I think it was blocked. Well, uh, Man, I don't we were, know if that ball was tipped or. I, I think it was, and if it wasn't, it was, it was really close. It looked like it was number 23, uh, Roman Brummel, who, uh, who, who, who busted through center of the uh, the punt team. Coach, help me out of the rule there. So if, you, if the punt is tipped, it, and it looked like Zerby is, is, is that all kind of like when the defensive, I guess it's not. So that's a live ball. That was a, well, it, it, um, uh, Kaler came up to field it. Correct. He did not have to field it. It would have been Cedar Crest ball. It would have been dead ball there. However, if he touches it and fumbles it, it's a live ball, and um, you know, so it's not it's not one of those plays where the defense touches it, but it's not marked dead. Correct. That's where the offense could pick it up and run. Okay. Or the uh, receiving team could pick it up and run. So we got second and eight. Ball just shy of midfield. Six thirty-five ticking on the clock. Nice pass from Huber. Looks like the receiver caught it right about the line of scrimmage. Then got driven back. We're actually going to spot him. Gonna lose a yard or two on that play. I'll tell you, the offensive line has done a heck of a job protecting Huber, giving him time tonight. But the, the Bulldog defensive line is, looks like they're finally getting some, some pressure on him. Looks like they sniffed that play out. They sat on the hitch. They didn't have anywhere to go with the ball. Third and 11. Huber back. Looking for his favorite target in Groff. Ball falls incomplete. Fourth and 11, probably have to take a shot here, huh, coach? Yeah, you know, we're uh, right now, you, you can't punt the ball back. You don't have enough possessions in the game yet if you don't score here. You know, I think this is our, our best chance to try to get the first down and, and, and go from there. 
Uh, we've certainly seen Hubert make some deep, deep completions. You know, whether it's Heisey or Kaler, Groff. That's who we have, the three wide receivers split. Two, res two running backs in. Help chip. Oh, Huber stands in, throws the ball, kind of gets tipped. The ball goes over on downs to the Bulldogs. Looks like he had Groff. Uh, again, looks like they went to their favorite play, which, again, at this point in time, it's a play you got to go to. Um, looking for that crossing route with Groff across the middle. Had a step on his uh, one of the defenders. Ball just got tipped and chains of possession. Well, with 5.23 on the clock here, and the Bulldogs up multiple scores, I'm guessing we're going to get a heavy dose of running the ball, which has been pretty much the Bulldogs' game plan all night. False start there from the right side of the line. First and 15. Ooh. Some good hitting out there still. Yeah. Number 26, Zerby. Real nice play. All right, second and 16. Got to love the fight from Coach Lambros' defense, continuing to push, not giving up. Jaden Jones all around the left side. Third and nine here. Hoffman on the keeper. Finding running holes. Breaking tackles. Extending the ball out into the end zone. And whatever, whatever hope was left for the Falcons, Hoffman just hit the nail in the coffin there. And a nice run, breaking tackles, and six more for Wilson. Yeah, that was uh, that might have been the dagger, Coach. Now, I'll tell you, it's it's it's, uh, it's unfortunate because um, the way the score looks right now, you know, I don't think it's indicative of how close the game has been. Um, you know, and and the one thing I would say is that the fight that Cedar Crest has had in them. I mean, they've gotten down multiple touchdowns multiple times. And kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting back and making plays. And, you know, there's still four minutes to go in the game. And there's no doubt they're going to continue the fight. But, uh, you know, again, the game got away from a little bit here, the score. Um, I do think it was, uh, again, it's not indicative of, of how close this game was and how competitive this game was. Yeah, for sure. Now, right now it says 48-24, but you know, we're talking halfway through the third quarter. We're a one, two possession game. and. Especially after the scoop and score there in early in the third quarter. Looked like it could anything could happen and then you know Cameron Jones kickoff return and Falcons answer again with another touchdown of their own and certainly a well played high school football game tonight. Not over yet, four minutes, but to put a lot of scenarios in where, especially if this extra point is made, where you can score four times in four minutes. All right, 
Rada on for the extra point. Woods with the hold. The kick is good. Well, with another break in the action, another opportunity to thank our sponsors, JBT Bank, founded in 1873. Jonestown Bank and Trust Company is a local independent community bank with 14 locations in the surrounding Lebanon, Lancaster, and Berks County area. JBT helping local residents, families, and businesses bank in a smile. Hi Z's Diner. The food is finer at Hi Z's Diner, located on Route 72. I had a good friend. Always got the shrimp basket at Heise's Diner. Mr. Falkerson. I, I wondered if those shrimp came out of Lions Lake. No. Fresh from the Atlantic. The Falcon Foundation. You have the opportunity to support the Falcon Foundation. Please do. They provide uh, many extracurricular opportunities for our students and staff throughout the Cornwall Lebanon School District, not just for our high school students, but for our middle school and all of our elementary students. Big thank you to the Cedar Crest High School live stream team. The students who are behind us in what we like to call the, the truck, working the cameras, working the sound boards, the video boards, the graphics on your screen. I mean, how great is a high school football game where you get the clock kicking down, the live scoring. They just do a phenomenal job. It is a heck of a program here, Cedar Crest, thanks to the live stream team that brings it to you watching from home. So the report is we got a couple hundred people watching from home tonight, so thank you to all the viewers watching from home tonight. We appreciate that. So whether you are a Falcon fan, Bulldog fan, or just a football fan, I know in previous years we've had viewers from all over the nation. All right, first and 10 for the Falcons. Number six, Isaiah Gonzalez with a nice run. Yeah, real nice run. Broke a couple of tackles, gained about three on first down. We don't we don't mention the offensive line enough here. I'm gonna get a couple of those names out there. Shaw, the tight end, number 75. Jake Klotke, number 71, Connor Dalbert. I think number 53, Nick Lambros is the center. Yep. Number 53, Nick Lambros. I don't think you can say enough about the QB center exchange and the snaps have been playing all night. Christian Weber, number 56. And number I think 55, Cameron Simone. Nice group of young athletes. Doing a good job. I'm sure I missed some other guys that were in there tonight. Two thirty-two on the clock, third and three for the Falcons. Gonzalez hits the hole hard. Looks like it's gonna bring up fourth down. 
About fourth and one. Fourth and a long one here. Love to see them keep moving the chains, keep getting some opportunities. Might not affect the outcome of the game, but. Coach, who do we have uh, coming up next week? I think next week Falcons are on the road um, at Penn Manor down in Millersville. And then um, finish the regular season um, that following Friday at home versus McCaskey. So Penn Manor next week. We'll take that drive down to Millersville. They play in Millersville Stadium down there? It's they do, yep, they do. All right, fourth and one here. One minute, 35 seconds on the clock. Falcons still trying to get a first down here. Nice run from Gonzalez. Nice push from the offensive line. It's like number 20 freshman uh, Zion Rolon has checked into the game for a tailback. Coach Wildeson and his staff will take a look at the tape. Probably a lot of positives, although it might not seem right now. A lot of positives that they can take away from this game. You know, as a as a coach, and I think this is probably true for any sport, uh, I know in, in basketball, you know, you, you win a game and you go back and you watch film, you're never as good as you thought you were. You lose a game, you go back, you watch film, you're never as bad as you thought you were. Uh, but the film never lies, and it, you know it, it, it gives you um, exactly what you need to correct, exactly what you did well, um, so you can build upon that. And um, you know, like you said, the, uh, the coaching staff will will spend some time this weekend studying this film, working at uh, you know what can they correct for next week, and also build upon the things they did do well because they did do a lot of good things tonight. Roll on with the carry, nice run for the freshman. Another run for roll on, and that's going to conclude the end of the game. So as the clock clicks down and it doesn't look like we're going to get another snap, the final score will be Cedar Crest Falcons 24, Bulldogs 49. Another beautiful night here at Earl Bolt Stadium as the two sides will shake hands. Thanks for joining us. Thanks again to all of our sponsors, Joe's Jones Sound Bank and Trust, Heisey's Diner. Get there tomorrow morning. Tell him Mike said you. I don't think that gets you anything, but just tell him I sent you. Stick around after the game. The Cedar Crest High School Band is going to be performing, and we will keep the live stream going for anybody that's looking to watch the band. So please stick around for the wonderful sounds and sights of the Cedar Crest High School Marching Band. Thanks to Coach Tom Smith for the commentary tonight. Appreciate your knowledge. Thanks to the live stream team, Mr. Moyer and all the kids in the truck. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe out there, everybody.
your face always toward the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you worldwide this morning concern over a growing health crisis the crisis has impacted so many industries this year
this noise? Where do you find hope? I find hope in helping others. I find hope in the community. I find hope in learning things. I find hope in... doesn't always roar. Sometimes, courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. Give me courage. Courage moves us forward, not in the absence of fear, but in the triumph over it. Courage.
because no one knows what tomorrow brings.